tell us about growing your brand as Keisha Dog Trainers. How have the people out there gotten to know about you? That's very interesting. I have a very, very big uh, team of people I work with. And uh, these people, either we have money or we don't have money, they will always make sure the brand is moving. We go door to door, like offices, let's say, reach people directly and speak to them, tell them the advantages of owning a security dog. And uh, tell them why you, you, you have to own it and also uh, drive you to how much you need to spend when you have a dog. How much do you spend when you have a person with a gun guarding uh, your premises? The risks of a person guarding your premises with a gun. We do radio advertisements and uh, so far not yet on TV, but on, on radios, newspapers, mm -hmm. a lot. We write articles, teach people about dogs. How can someone keep their dog healthy and also free of infection to avoid it from maybe infecting anybody in case it bites them? Actually, that is, uh, it goes back to veterinary. Mm. One, first of all, someone needs to understand that when you own a dog, one of the things that you must do is making sure your dog is vaccinated against parvovirus, virus, against rabies, that's the most dangerous disease or virus that usually kills people when a dog is not vaccinated. And also people should be really vaccinated. Human beings, there is an rabies for human beings. Once you get it, and it's even cheaper, <laughs> it's, it's, it's very nice. You get it once for all. Maybe you can always be doing it after like five years. That's when you want. But it's good and I advise people really to go for antrobies for human beings. Also dogs should be vaccinated. So tell us about dealing with so many dogs at the same time. Because what I've seen here is quite a number of breeds. And I imagine every breed comes with a different character. So how do you actually handle them? Like I would ask human beings, but now in this case, how do you handle working with too many dogs? What I want to say is that um, we have a schedule. Now we run our work. And uh, what happens is that um, every trainer in a day can handle more than 10 dogs. Because we train them in intervals. After every, let's say, 30 minutes, you bring another one. 30 minutes, you bring another one. So, when, when, by the time you're done with 10, the first one has rested. So you repeat again. You get it? So, and, and also the number really, it's not 15 people. So if you give them, every person like 10 dogs, you're going about 70 or more, or 60 or something like that. Yeah. Have you had challenges of uh, situations where maybe one of your tra trainers has been beaten by a dog or mm. someone that was around here? Situations like that that have gone haywire maybe? Such as that in any business can never fail to be there. And, and it's true, but we try to minimize them. We rarely, like in a year, you may find there is no bite in the training school here. Okay. Mm. Uh, once in a while, really, because these guys are trained. They know how to deal with a, an aggressive dog. They know how to deal with a calm dog. So, uh, but you can't avoid it. At times, it could be maybe a dog to a dog they are fighting and then they need to separate them. So what challenges have you actually faced to bring Keisha dog trainers to where it is today? There are quite many. One of them is um, resources, finance, because now the business has to, 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 it has to give me, for me to be able to put back I did not have capital that it was there. I had worked it maybe somewhere else or I inherited the riches from my, my, rela my relatives or my parents. That's the biggest challenge that even we could have grown bigger than this but because money issue. The second one is about training. Of course, we get clients who give us dogs. Like human beings, you go to school, there are those that pass, there are those that fail. Even dogs fail. We bring it here, we train it, it fails, and we even give you um, uh, a certificate of, of failing. <laughs> yeah, mm. then 
uh, when it happens like that, well, how, how does it happen? I mean, it, uh, you go and buy a dog with no idea of how a security dog is supposed to be. But you only know that German Shepherds are good dogs. You only know that Rottweilers are good dogs. That's what you know. But you, you, you do not investigate. You do not dig deeper to understand if, yes, it's a German Shepherd. What, what are the things that I'm supposed to look at? Because in a litter, not all of them can make good guard dogs. There are those that are born when they are naturally dull. There are those that are born, but when they are good. So the personalities also now comes in. And, and then, you get here and you can't give it is rice expensive. and chicken. Yeah. Okay, we have those clients when, when they're feeding their dogs in that way. They are, they are, they are willing to give, you the to give a special meal, mm. like how they're feeding their home. Those ones are very good clients. There are these clients, when they pay the money, they want you to feed actually more than what they've paid you. But even what we feed you here, really, it is very good. Only that some clients are specific says my dog eats rice it eats chicken that's what i want <laughs> you get it mm. it's, it's a bigger challenge but eventually like you've seen here have you seen any small dog no dog that is small all of them are bigger but one will tell you that the food we give is not good food yes okay mm. so how have you managed to pull through these challenges and still keep going through actually talking to them we keep talking to them, we keep writing, um, I keep writing articles, educating them about dogs, educating them on what kind of breed that one may require for what purpose. So it keeps, every day it keeps changing. Even if you go to the breed, you with the, to the breeder, you know what you want. It's a German Shepherd, yes. It's a Rottweiler, yes. It's a it's what breed, yes. But what do you want it for? Just like a pet in the house. You don't just wake up and get a pet. You may get a pet that sheds too much. It will shed on your chairs and you won't like it. So before you get it, read about it. Does it shed too much? Do you need a dog with too much fur? Do you need a dog like Bush with, with, with short coat? Let's call it small little hair. You get it. So once you realize that, you read about all the things. Or you come to us and we tell you the disadvantage and the advantage. So the dog business is not something that I think Ugandans have actually gotten into <clears throat> so much. So how have you used this monopoly to your advantage? There are many people who are doing this, but only that they are not doing it in a professional way. The way you see us here, we are well established. Some people are outside there actually marketing, but when you go to where they operate from, they actually do not allow to take you to where they operate from. They are not open. They are not straight. <gasps> no, bush. Come on, boy. Mm. See? So they come down. So they only look at, uh, looking at marketing and getting clients. And some clients really do not have time to go and see exactly what we're doing. For us, we emphasize people that if you want to buy a dog, that if you want to bring your dog for training, this day is one of our policies. You don't just call us into your home, pay us the money and ask us to come. To, to pick the dog and drop it here. We want you to come and see where the dog is going. Mm. Because when they come, they are, they are happy. They know where the dogs are going. So there are many youth out there who um, finish the university yeah. and try to apply for jobs or even maybe sometimes fail and sit at home. Mm. What advice do you have for them when it comes to being creative and coming up with their own businesses? Yeah, the youth still have a very big challenge and that's why you always see them on the streets fighting. Um, it's because they believe after school you you have to put on shoes, put on well, go in someone's office and ask for the job. I personally recruit, but when you ask in a position, in a vacancy that you're recruiting, you need one person, but you get like more than 50 applications, meaning people are jobless. I want to encourage them that, um, and then maybe also I will, I will blame the, the education system. In this country they, they they don't teach people to go out there and start their own they're always teaching them to, to go job white seeker. collar jobs mm. to seek job for job so for me i mean and even my kids actually i don't want them to, to grow up study 
and go and look for jobs. I want them to, 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 to be able to start up anything. If you love jobs, fine, come and work. But if you don't like them, at least you must have something that you like, that you're gonna go out there and begin, however small it could be. Even these people work with, they reach a time when they have understood, so they go. We have had many people here who have left and gone and started their own. And I'm very grateful for them because every time I'm out there and I see them, yes, I feel myself, at least there's something I've put uh, in, in people's mind and they're able to, to earn a living from it. Okay. Yeah. So what are your future plans? What should we expect of uh, Keisha Dog Trainers, of Michael Wopo in the near future? The near future, Uganda, East Africa and Africa. Mm -hmm. My biggest dream is to make sure that in Africa we lead. We have uh, the biggest academy when it comes to dogs. I want to host those big, big breeders and dog trainers in the world. I've visited different countries, but I want to, to, to host them here. So that's my dream, to, to grow bigger and have an academy. This is not yet an academy. We have here, you saw the land I showed it to you, it's bigger. We haven't developed it yet. The whole of it, we're just still on something very small, not too small, but we want to develop the whole of it. So my dream is to see that the whole of it is developed and all Ugandans have, uh, have their security is dogs. Okay. Yeah, that's that's my dream. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing so much insight. You're welcome. I'm sure the viewers out there have taken a tip or two from Michael today. Well, who thought someone could make money and actually earn a living from training dogs in an academy? Well, I just got to know about that today and I'm quite impressed, I should say. That was it for Legit Hustlers this evening. Catch us again next week. My name is Brenda Kimbabazin.